and you get a bug in your head. That's what I got. I got a bug in my head that said, Darcy, you need to rebuild your pantry today. My pantry a year later, and it needs some work. Um, it's not quite working for us because I find that I'm having to rebuild sections too much just to get new things in. Um, I can make better use of space that we have, and that's going waste. And then I realized, after I did all the work to get this spice cabinet in last year, I thought it was a great idea, and it was going to save me not just space, but make things a little more organized. I am wasting a ton of space. There's the space on either side of it, and then the space that's here to here that could be better utilized with new shelving. So just like this space, I'm going to be adding new shelves here on each of these shelves and rearranging things. Plus I have to make room for my new canner. Plus all of the things that, that I'm going to start canning need to have a place to go as I get it done. So follow along. Okay, before we get started putting everything back into the pantry, I wanna share a little bit about doing uh, storage with airtight containers. You'll see a lot of videos on YouTube where people go and do a Dollar Tree reorganization of their pantry um, using all Dollar Tree products. But the thing I wanna warn you about that is that your containers may not be airtight. And I've seen a lot of the videos and I've, I've touched a lot of the things they use and they're not airtight. So when you're putting flour into a, uh, a container where when you squeeze it, you can hear the air coming out of it. Even though this is a flip top container with a gasket around it to try to help, it's the way it was constructed that it allows air to escape when you squeeze on it, which means that if you can get air out, air is gonna go in. So while this is okay for some things, um, it's not great for long-term long storage because you've got product that's sitting there with all the air in your container and air plus light are the two worst things for food as far as storage goes. Well, like tornadoes and floods and hurricanes, they aren't good either. But for your everyday problems, these are the things that you have to watch out the most, light and air. So I also use these IKEA containers. They are completely air airtight, um, if I actually have this closed. Uh, these are rigid so that they don't squeeze and there's no chance for that to happen. Um, the container has gaskets around it to keep it, to keep it tight that way. Um, you can use some like this that are super tight uh, and it's really hard to get them off, although, you have to be careful about putting the lids on. Um, this is from the Dollar Tree. I mean, you can hear the air escaping out of this easily. So what I'll be using is a lot of uh, glass mason jars, um, OXO containers, the OXO containers, um, like this one right here for things, um, a lot of IKEA jars. But the last thing I wanted to talk about was when you're using canning lids, you can use a regular lid and ring top screw on ring top and that's fine it works just fine i bought quite a few of these white lids um, that do not have a gasket on the inside and found that in fact they were not airtight i found it with my dehydrated foods when i opened one that i thought was okay and it had a problem i mean air had gotten into it and the things had gotten soft knowing that it had brought in air so i had to throw them back in the dehydrator and dry them again there is a version of this that has a seal already on it like this one does um, right here, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a, a like a little rubberized gasket built into the lid. That serves the same purpose of making it airtight. But you can also get, um, if you have a bunch of these, you can buy the gaskets for them. This one does not fit this one specifically, but it's a lot like what you would get. And it would just insert here, and then when you put it on your lid, I mean on your jar, it forms that airtight seal when you tighten it up. And when you're putting food back into your pantry that you're not wasting all that time stocking up and making sure you have enough, when in fact you're letting it go to waste because it's not airtight. So let's get busy. Okay, so here are the options that you can get just ready-made shelving, ready to go. So it is going to be this size shelf here that I will have them cut in half and be able to add to it. But if I didn't want And then here are the brackets I'm going to use. For the corners, they do not have the L shape across here to hold it at the angle, but they've got a wider um, section here to help make it more stable. That would make a cute onion or potato tray. That is way cute. It's 13 bucks, but that's way cute. It gives you ventilation and it is stackable. Look at that. And the spice rack has been taken care of. When I walk back here to get my wood cut at the wood cutting machine, uh, I noticed these planks in the trash and I asked and they are free. So I'm going to tear these to make a spice rack 
for the show. So I can show you what I'm doing to extend these shelves. I'm doing a very non Pinteresty, uh, probably would make men and even women who are really into this stuff cringe at the way I did it, but this works for me. Um, I have placed the, the uh, shelf up against the wall, got it to where I need it to be, marked the bracket, drilled in screws to hold it up into the studs. So it will now give me um, bracing for this shelf. I cannot screw up into that shelf because it's so thin, it really won't hold one and I can't reach from doing it from the top, but this one's gonna hold no weight. It's gonna be either cereal boxes or paper towels, so it's okay. But what I've done for these other ones, I'll show you this one I finished now, is I have actually begun to screw um, those, uh, screw it into the stud like that, that holds the top shelf up. I'm screwing it into that stud to brace it so there is no bounce of the shelf. So I've got these two to finish. Um, one more stud, I'm at one more bracket to get in here and then I'll be ready to start stocking my shelves. All right, here we go. Ta -da. Our first plant, it doesn't look any different. Yeah, but here's what I've done. This is uh, where we expanded our pantry last year. So um, I just added these cross shelves onto a bracket to make sure that we had some, some uh, so that they weren't gonna go anywhere. So up top, I have stored extra storage glassware, um, extra storage jars, and then back there is just some serving stuff that we do every once in a while. Uh, Crystal and some big like party glasses for when we have friends over. We've got extra glasses in the house. Um, this is breakfast um, oatmeal that when I get it for free, I stock up. And then a little hole for the treats that when I occasionally get the boys breakfast treats, they go up there. And then the hole in the back back here is going to be extra flower storage that I need to pull out and put there. More breakfast. Uh, I'll go back on the shelf. Sorry. These are our normal breakfast cereals. They are the OXO uh, containers. Um, they're really, really airtight, so they're really good for keeping this fresher. Um, and then I have some overstock of cereal at the top. Then across this shelf is some of our freeze-dried storage. These are the things that we get to most often. Um, we have stuff back in our long-term storage too, but this is the stuff that I would 
be using very often except for that's my son's treat uh, mac and cheese because he's a mac and cheese fiend so we bought him that a couple of Christmases ago to eat whenever he wanted then I have a large hole over here for more storage for things like uh, sugar or flour or any other bulk uh, products that we have that we don't need to get into constantly then I'll have extra paper towel storage right there this is the baking corner this is the section right here that we added in what was there before, if you didn't remember, it was just like a, um, a large CD tower from Ikea that had lots of little spots. But I found I just wasn't keeping it organized and nothing really fit. So I figured that I could come up with a better solution. And so this is what I did. So we just extended those shelves. It's almost all spices. Um, baking corner here. Back here are regular bulk spices. Here are other uh, more jarred spices, things that we keep that or I've dehydrated and powdered. Then uh, in the corner back there are some extra condiments. Then more spices here, a little thing of uh, emergency drinking water that we keep for our packs in the cars. And um, then I'm gonna go back shelf by shelf. So more general use items in bulk. Then this is flour, sugar, cornmeal, brown sugar that I make, then powdered sugar, and I'll put a link down below to how to make your own powdered sugar. Uh, chips, um, that back there is my vanilla extract that I'm desperately in need of more. I've only got a little bit left. Then cereal like I showed you, then breakfast. Next shelf down is, this is where I'm rebuilding my dehydrated products. I have a bookcase in the kitchen that I also keep some in. Um, some of the bulk stuff but this is the smaller stuff that's easier to store here then in the back back there is um our dehydrated marshmallows for snacks for the winter and then this is full of dehydrated mushroom powder this will be where all of our extra condiments go um i don't keep many on hand because we don't re really use a ton and i'll be making my own mayonnaise from now on um i've decide that's what I want to do instead of buying any so because we don't use it enough and it's not worth keeping so I'll just make it as we need it um then we have canned goods peanut butter um and just like I showed you earlier make sure that you're marking your jars so that you know or your cans so that you know when the dates are up um and you can rotate them through quickly you know what to eat first and then um be able to store well and you can see I've got quite a bit of space that hopefully with my, now that I'm going to start canning my own, I'll be able to fill these spots with actually home canned goods, but I will fill some of this back up with uh, canned goods for the winter to make sure we have stuff on hand. Back here is just more extra daily baking stuff. Uh, that's going to food pantry. Um, baking soda, oils, um, sesame seeds for making tahini, uh, more coconut oils back there, salts. Um, that's the whole corner back there is full of salts. Then this shelf is, um, I keep a few season packs. If you, I don't know if you can see them. Seasoning packs right here in the back. And then back there are my food uh, food saver bags when I'm going to be doing some bulk storage. And I'll pull those out. Um, up here, a little. Con this is just the convenience foods. Mac and cheese, rice seasoning packs. Um, and then the few that we keep on hand for things. Oh, sorry. Few that we keep on things like a couple of boxes of cake mix, onion soup mix, uh, another thing of mac and cheese, um, tortilla shells, some muffin mix, and back here just a couple of things of uh, dressing that if I uh, like turkey dressing or um, stovetop that if I'm going to make meatloaf, it's a quick and easy meatloaf mix that I can do when I'm in a hurry. Soups, fruits, stocks that this will soon become filled with home stocked, uh, home canned stocks. That, again, that goes to the food pantry. I don't know why it's still there. Then back here are more condiments on a little um, shelf that turns that makes it easier to store everything and keep it compact. This is the snack section for crackers, uh, snack crackers, um, some snack bars, um, goldfish that my son, one of my sons really likes, then other snack foods that will go here. Um, all of my dehydrator sheets, uh, wax paper, parchment paper, plastic wrap, and then foil that we use for doing stuff on the grill. This is the popcorn snack box. Popcorn, a couple of things for uh, microwave. We also have these that we can microwave without oils. And then some seasoning blends that my husband likes for it. Right there is canned proteins. 
all of my grains. We still have to stock up on some that we're out of. Um, then that is the pasta shell for my oldest because that's his favorite food. Then more of those foods, the uh, spices. Then on this bottom shelf is now the new home for my canner. Um, some canning supplies down below it. Uh, my dad's Diet Coke stash for when he comes to visit. This bin will be for plastic, uh, like uh, my, my zip top bags that I used to store in. This is for my husband's lunch. This is extras of uh, bulk seeds and stuff that we keep here. Then the secret ramen bin. Then this is like a snack bin of candy that uh, if we keep some, this is where it is so they can come and grab it easily. Uh, down there is just extra silverware, uh, my roasting pan, my Instant Pot, um, our, our immediate use of water storage that we can grab quickly. This is for our chips. And then that is my stash of pumpkin juice uh, from Aldi that I use for every fall. We get it out for our Harry Potter marathon. But I sneak some during the year too. So that's it. Um, I've got room to grow, but we got room to spread so things weren't just stacked so heavily and uh, so easily to make a mess because this thing was easy to just make a complete mess. Um, it's not Pinterest worthy. It is a working pantry that works for our family with foods that we eat um, and food, real food that we have all the time. So if you'll look at right here, I'll link you, I think it's on this side, this side, I'm backwards for this one, uh, link you to a video that you're going to like about food storage um, and how I store these when I, when I open them up and, um, just let me know in the comments below if you have questions or comments, uh, be nice and I will see you next time. Thanks.